Coriolis effect. Coriolis effect is a result of the Earth's rotation or spin, its daily spin, and the fact that the Earth is a sphere. It is a pseudo force, it's an apparent force, and it's felt by fluids such as air or water as vapor or water as liquid. So it's felt in the air and it's felt <clears throat> in the oceans. So we need to understand this force. It will explain the atmospheric circulation as well as the surface currents. Now let's see. Imagine a transparent earth. Showing the position of two cities. Let's say those cities are Quito, Quito at the equator. And the other city is Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York is situated at seven degrees north. And Quito is at zero degrees right at the equator. Now, Buffalo's daily path around Earth's circumference is not as long as Quito. So if this is a transparent Earth, the daily path of Buffalo, New York is much smaller than the daily path of Quito at the equator. Okay. You can also imagine that over here at zero degrees, the Earth is a little bit more fat. And over here at seven degrees north, Earth is a little bit skinnier because of this spherical shape of our planet. So these two locations have... Um, different uh, circumferences to go around over a period of 24 hours. And so they will have different uh, eastward velocities. Remember, we're going this way. If Quito moves um, at a greater circumference, at a longer, has a longer circumference, but it also has to make it one rotation in 24 hours, Quito will move at a faster speed. In fact, that speed is about 1,600 kilometers per hour. In Buffalo, New York, the speed will be slower because the circumference is smaller. So that speed is about 1,200 kilometers per hour. So, if we have an air parcel that uh, uh, starts to evaporate over here, near the coast of Quito, and it reaches the troposphere, and it starts to move towards the north, that air parcel will carry this speed from Quito. It will have the speed of 1,600 kilometers per hour. As that parcel moves north, and at this speed, that parcel will then be deflected to the right because it's moving at a faster speed. So that air parcel is deflected to the north, to the right, I'm sorry. It moves north and it has this faster speed and so, as it arrives in Buffalo, New York, it is deflected to the right. That deflection is a result, 
is what uh, is the Coriolis effect. Is this deflection to the right of the target? Um, if you imagine this is an airplane taking off from Quito to Buffalo, New York, the airplane will take off with a speed of 1600 kilometers per hour. As it moves towards Buffalo, New York, it, with this speed, because Buffalo is moving at a slower speed, the airplane will arrive ahead of Buffalo. Okay, now if if you uh, understand this, answer me. What if the air parcel is moving from Buffalo to Quito, the reverse direction? Will the air, air parcel arrive on target, before target, or ahead of the target? So we have an air parcel that is moving at 1200 kilometers per hour, but is going to a place where the speed is faster. So that air parcel will be deflected. It will arrive after the target. Okay, so again, the deflection is to the right. This deflection to the right is the Coriolis effect. So in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Northern Hemisphere, the Coriolis act as deflecting things to the right of the target. In the Southern Hemisphere, the deflection is to the left. of the target, okay? So, this deflection to the right or to the left is the Coriolis effect, and it's going to act in the uh, air, the water as vapor, and water as liquid in the oceans.